This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. Are you interested in knowing what the most efficient kits are to run in patch 14.0? Well, you came to the right place. Today we're going to be discussing efficient kits that you can run so you get more money, you kill more players, and you complete more quests, all while surviving and in doing it in as little money as possible. These are methods that I've used personally already. I have a max out hideout and I'm almost in max traders. Sure, part of that is because I live in Hawaii and I'm still scared to go outside. But the other part of that is using wildly efficient kits that make it super possible for me to level fast, make money, progress my character as well as my hideout and my quests. Previously, I'd feel like this video didn't have a whole lot of merit. I mean, for several wipes, we didn't see a lot of big changes to escape from Tarkov. However, with all the big changes like ammunition and also how it penetrates armor, how it deals with flesh, armor changes places where you actually are armored, and different armors you actually want to run early on, and recoil changes shaking up what weapons you want to be using level up, this video is now more relevant than ever. But without further ado, my name is Tickle Me Pink, your least favorite content creator. I'm going to have a bunch of tips to help you guys out. If any of them are helpful, make sure to smash that dislike button and tell me to kill myself in the comments down below. And if you guys make it to the end of this video, I'm going to show you guys a secret that I've been weaponizing for the last couple days here that lets me run level 5 armor and an insanely overpowered weapon and it never gets looted. This thing just keeps coming back on insurance time and time and time again. And it's because it's really the culmination of all the tips I'm gonna give you guys in this video, all put into one kit, and I hope you guys like it. Let's hop into these tips. First and foremost is using the correct armor. So I'm gonna do a completely separate video on how armor works now in Escape from Tarkov. But if you play Tarkov for a very, very long time like I have, you may remember a system way back in the day where you'd be able to wear armor and then wear an armored rig over the top of it. And armored plates work somewhat like that now. So basically, if you have armor that has the option to put armored plates in and then it has armor behind it, if the plate stops the bullet, you take no damage. However, if the bullet goes through the plate, then it's going to minimize a lot of that damage, lower its penetration value, and the soft armor behind it could stop it as well. You may find yourself in a position where you're shooting something like green tips, like M855, 556, into someone, and you were just laying into them. However, that plate is lowering the velocity of the round, the penetration, and the damage around so much that the level 2 soft armor behind that plate is actually catching those bullets next, and that's why people feel so tanky. So make sure you're utilizing the right armor. Now, any armor that has armor plates plus soft armor is really good, but there's a few other factors we're really going to look for. One of that is going to be throat armor your throat is now a very dangerous spot to get hit particularly due to buckshot and nine millimeter rounds sure a 556 can go straight through your juggler and you're gonna die because at the moment the only throat armor i've really found is level two super high-end kits have level three throat armor by the time we have access to that there's gonna be rounds that are shredding through level three but just protecting this region from buckshot and pistol rounds is probably gonna up your survival rate a couple percentage points alone as soon as i made that change I started surviving significantly more so make sure you're looking for armors that have throat protection plates and soft armor behind it the next place we really want to make sure is armored is our sides now this will cover like your lower obliques area and then down more on the sides of your body this isn't the most important however when you're shouldering up against someone especially when you're like right handing on someone your right side is very exposed there's no armor that actually covers your armpits and there's currently a glitch actually where if you get shot in the armpit by a scab you just instantly die i'm not sure what's going on with that so let me know if you guys have experienced that before it's pretty frustrating but make sure you have this side armor now let me show you guys what armor i think is the best for what we're looking for with throat protection soft armor protection plates and side armor Another big change that's came to this wipe that's going to really influence armor is how much armor is on the flea market. If we go look on the flea market right now, you can actually buy a slick carrier right now. Now you will notice that they do not have armor plates inside them. So you're going to have to go ahead and get armor plates and put them inside the armor. And we'll cover that in a whole different armor video, how all the plates work and what plates you can transition from armor to armor. However, you'll see that basically we can buy just about any armor on the flea market now. So what armor do I recommend for you guys? Well, we're looking for the best bang for your buck, the rope protection, soft armor protection, plates, and side armor. For me, that talks about two different pieces of armor right here. The digital floor is not to be confused for one of them. It looks very similar, but it's only going to be level three, okay? What we're going to be looking for here is the mountain floor right here. And you're going to want to make sure you get one that has two plates. And you'll see that these people have stripped all the plates on it. But it's going for around 160k. You can also just go ahead and buy plates from traders if you have them unlocked yet. But this is going to be 
very strong. It's got that throw protection. It's got that soft armor. It's a really, really good option. We have one other option that's significantly cheaper, and that's the digital flora down here, but it's the 6v13, not the 6v23-1. And this goes for really cheap for some reason. It's going up in price and people are finding out about it, but I've been getting this for like 60k with plates in it. I'm sure if you sat here and refresh for a little while, you're going to find people that list that don't realize that these guys have stripped all the plates out. You're going to find people that list for 60k with plates in it. It might take like five minutes, but let's say you're waiting like right there. I refresh once, two plates, you just repair it. It's no big deal. 60k, you have level four armor, you have that throw protection, everything. And it's going to cost you pennies on the dollar to have this. Pop on this before people find out about this. And you're going to be paying like a third of the price that you should be paying on armor. The next thing I want to talk about was what meds you should be bringing to a raid. And this is going to seem like a dickhead point of view. What the fuck are you talking? What meds should I bring to raid? It really depends what map you're going to be going to, what your play style is looking like, and how much PvP you're going to get into, right? If you're going to avoid all PvP, then spend less in the medical category. But I don't want you guys going into raid with less than a car med kit. If you only have AI2s, put a grizzly in your pouch and then just go ahead and heal off that. AI 2-ing, bandaging, splinting, it takes way too much time and a lot of times you're going to get killed before you're able to re-engage. Someone's just going to run up to you and finish you off. So make sure you're using at least a grizzly kit or you have a car med kit in your rig. Now, if you're going to be going to something like Shoreline where there's it's a, it's a long haul to the evac, right? And you're going to have to do a lot of quests. Go ahead and spend the money on Salua. On the flea market right now, the Saluas are only going for 20k. If you're not going to be doing as much combat, grab yourself an IFAC. However, I would strongly recommend you go Slua if you're going to experience any PvP because you don't want to be bleeding out. It gets really rough early on, especially with a lot of flesh ammo. You need a lot of heals. It's not like late game. Where you're going to take one fight. We got the armor piercing ammo. You're going to doink him. He's only going to get one or two rounds on you. You're going to heal and then move on. Make sure you have enough meds. Bring a splint in your rig, a light bandage in your rig. The light bandage is a double whammy. When you have a bleed, let's say you have a black left arm and you're bleeding and your thorax is dark red. If you just go ahead and press your keybind for your Salua, it's going to prioritize that bleed that's likely on that arm. And you're going to have to do a full animation for that. It's going to use a lot of durability off that Salua and your thorax is still going to be in critical condition. Now, if you use my keybinds video, then you know you, you don't even have that problem. You're going to instantly target your thorax, fix the bandage bleed instantly. I'll have that linked in the top right, so make sure you're on those keybinds. However, having this bandage will make it much easier if you don't have superb keybinds to so just bandage quick, then throw on the Slua. It'll be faster, more efficient, and save you money. Same thing with a splint. You're not sitting there survival kidding when you have a broken leg. Go ahead and just have a splint. They're 4K each. You can bring two. I would likely bring one splint or two splints. Depends how much you break your legs, realistic. I see a lot of you guys falling off cliffs and shit all the time, right? One works perfectly fine. But make sure you have two cats. Now, cats are like S marches. They're a heavy bleed stopper and they're sold by Peacekeeper. However, you apply them faster than you do S marches. So that's a little bonus tip for you guys. And those heavy bleeds will tick you down really fast, especially in situations where you're running to people that have flesh damage ammunition. Very quickly, you can have two or three heavy bleeds and you can just end up bleeding to death, which sucks so much. So make sure you have at least two of those on you, sometimes three. Once again, it depends how much combat you're going to be getting. It seems a little obnoxious, but. When you're only spending 2k, you know, to bring a bandage, to bring a cat into you in raid, you can easily drop this for just about any item you find that's worth at least 10k, 20k, 3k. I mean, so many things early on are worth way too much money. If this saves your life, even 1 out of 10 raids, it pays for itself 20 times over. The next thing we need to talk about that might be a no-brainer is make sure you have a helmet. So if you've been watching my channel for a long time, I got the whole original Tarkov community to quit wearing helmets way back in the day because they used to cost you so much, they would never stop bullets, and you just you were dumb if you used helmets. But that is not the case anymore. Helmets stop bullets, they bounce bullets all the fucking time. It, put on whatever cheap helmet you can, you're looking for at least armor level 3. The more protection, the better. If it goes over the ears, the better. If it goes over the nape, the better. But just get that ricochet chance up. Get that helmet on to stop some bullets. It will save your life time and time again. The next thing that we're going to talk about is weapons and ammunition. So we all have things that we're comfortable with right now. But one thing I would strongly recommend you guys do is get on a weapon that's using 762 by 39. Now you can buy this on the flea market at level 15. It's going for around 500 rubles around right now. 
and it goes through level 4 armor consistently. It has very high penetration and it's a very cheap round. Compare that to 556 five, green tip, which I'm killing rogues for on Lighthouse and selling for sometimes up to 2,000 rubles around. It spikes up to that quite consistently. It is such a better round. Now, I would recommend the AKM, but I like to get very aggressive, get a lot of PvP, and that full automatic function is really nice. If you like things like the SKS or you want to have higher capacity magazines and semi automatic, maybe you can go for the VPO 137. If you want to use the new RPD, machine gun maybe that works for you but that caliber is going to be your best bang for your buck until like level three or level four traders As a matter of fact till level four traders now that i think about it now that you have your caliber in mind that you want to use what it doesn't have to be 762 that's just what i found has been working extremely well this wipe go ahead and modify your weapon as little as possible so previously in the game you really wanted to modify your weapon up a ton but now that recoil is pretty manageable even with a stock weapon the less you can modify your weapon, the more likely you're going to get it back on insurance. We're going to talk about insurance after this. But something else you can do that I use in that, in that special kit that I've been getting back in insurance all the time that we'll talk about at the end of this video is put on like wooden furniture on some certain parts of the weapon. For example, like the pistol grip. Sure, you could get a little bit more ergo. You could spend a lot of money and get a new pistol grip. But when people see that it has a wire stock with a rubber butt pad, and then wooden furniture pistol grip, it suddenly looks so much less appealing, even though the stats are not that much worse and stats are not worth as much as they were in the previous wipe. So keep that in mind, make your armor look less appealing. If you're wearing that green armor that I showed you, a penis helmet, GSSHs, and you have an AKM with wooden furniture on it, sure, it might have an optic and a suppressor as well, and you're very effective moving around the map, gunning people down. But someone kills you, unless you died to a scav who spawned with some cursed loadout and all he has is a pistol to his name, he's going to limp that shit across the map for the next 30 minutes, you're going to get that stuff back on insurance. And if you have a teammate, you're going to get it way back on insurance even way more. That's another huge tip. Run with at least one other guy. Help each other with quests. Help each other with keys. If you don't have someone to play with, join my Discord. I will play with you myself. I would love to have more guys to play with in the Discord, and that will be linked in the description down below. On another token of getting your gear back, use a backpack that makes it a pain in the ass for someone to go ahead and get your stuff. There are a lot of people that are down bad starting to wipe late, they're hiding in corners with pistols and stuff, and they might catch you with an ear shot, a face shot, something like that, right? If you're using a backpack, like the new RK PT25, it has like a little thermos on it, it looks kind of like a small mechanic bag, guess what? They really can't, they can't take your arm I recommended because it's a 4x3 and it only has a 3x3 slot. They can only take either a helmet or a headset. They can't fit an extra weapon in it. So suddenly they can't really take any of your equipment. However, you can stuff plenty of high value loot in this backpack. So dress for success. Don't dress for someone to steal your identity, steal your entire loadout as fast as possible. All right, it's a special thank you for making this video. Let me show you guys a curse kit that I've been utilizing. I've gotten back several times. I just built another one right now for the sake of this video. But this is what I've been using. Now, you can change out the weapon. First and foremost, we've built an AKM. You'll see it has a, a meta stock on it. I put a, a hand grip that actually looks like wooden furniture, so it's less likely to be grabbed. We're using just the, the orange magazines, the standard pistol grip, a rubber butt pad, an ugly holographic, so people don't want to pick this up, and they often don't. What you'll notice, though, is this has a BP inside of it, right? These magazines are top loaded with BP, and I just cut right through people. You see, I have all of my medicine because all of these meds right here cost me around 40k and guess what it saves my life time and time again if it saves your life one time in 20 raids it's paid for itself many times over it probably cuts even right around there actually depends what you're looting to be honest this rig it's a massive rig and i can put a ton of loot in it guess what it doesn't fit in my backpack now the zuck people don't even look at this zuck but guess what's going on with this zuck this zuck is loaded with level five plates that's right i have full level five protection in this dinky little press kit and guess what people might notice they might click on it when i'm dead but a lot of people don't realize they have to like throw things on the ground and then utilize the modding feature in game to go ahead and pull plates out right we're utilizing head protection i put on a tc2002 because it has really good head protection it doesn't really cost much at all you'll see my outfit here guess what guys it blends in with the snow look the blue the white the blue it looks really good in the snow i shit you not a lot of you guys i see running around wearing full green drip if you're an Usek, here's a hidden tip. Go over here. It's the first shirt and the first pants you could buy. You could also go with these pants and probably blend in even a little bit better. But it really does help you blend in with the snow. You look a lot more like a rock. Also, the yellows on your character, they blend in with like the, the hay and stuff that's sticking out. I shit you not, guys. The amount of times that people don't see me and I get a free kill 
is insane. You'll see this AKM right here, it's not gonna get picked up. This backpack kind of sucks, it's not gonna get picked up. And I just get these kids back non-stop and I am extremely lethal. I mean, I'm shooting some high tier ammunition. I have a really easy to control rifle. I have level five armor. I have a ton of space to loot. And all of this kit probably takes around 200 to 300K to make. Now, you could just make a simpler version of this kit with what I showed you guys with the level four armor. You can find GSSHs, you can find a penis helmet. You can just take whatever rig you get off scavs, right? You can go ahead and run an AKM with iron sights guys and that kit would probably cost you only around 150k to run and you are going to profit so much you're gonna complete so many quests things will go good for you so hopefully this video helped you out if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and if you haven't seen my settings guide i'll have that on screen right now if you use these keybinds it's gonna up your survival rate by a couple percentage points it really depends how fucked up your keybinds are right now I look forward to seeing you guys all on Twitch and in my Discord. And peace out. Love you all, guys. I'll see you in the next video.